Hello, everyone. Uh, my name is Daniel Crane, and I am the Director of Programming at the Center for Creative Entrepreneurship. And you are listening to another Global Industry Spotlight, a conversational series focused on providing resources and insights for the creative entrepreneur. We are streaming live out of the Comcast Business Startup Studio, a room designed for Chicago's small business community, located at 2112, Chicago's first music, film, and tech incubator. Uh, today, the Global Industry Spotlight is on Aya Gashik, a program director at Seed Slovenia. Over the past 10 years at Seed, she has developed new learning programs and solutions for founders of different company stages, from startups to global tech companies. She has helped build an open, collaborative, and trusted community and provided individual support to several hundred founders by connecting them with mentors in a broader international network. Prior to Seed, she has developed two magazines, an entrepreneurial GEA forum, and a student magazine, Neo, where she served as editor-in-chief. She co-authored the book, Stories of Success, How 63 Slovenians Became Successful, and holds a Master of Science in Business Administration. Aya is a PFP alumni 2016 and describes her time spent in Chicago and years in the Catalyze community as inspiring and life-changing. Uh, let's bring her into the conversation. Hi. 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 <laughs> <laughs> so, um, you know, thank you for taking the time to talk to us today. I'm I'm looking forward to the conversation. One, because you and I have very similar jobs. Um, you know, we are building communities and support networks and support programs around kind of the entrepreneurial ecosystem in our perspective uh, places. So, you know, before we kind of get into to the work that you're doing at Seed, can you just give us a little bit of background about yourself? Of course. But you've actually explained everything. So. <laughs> I know. I was like, it's a great bio. <laughs> yeah, it is a great bio. <laughs> so first of all, thanks for the invitation. Yeah. I mean, uh, yeah, in short, you know, you described everything, what we do, you know. For us, the paramount of everything is like creating a brutally honest community where founders come and share, you know, share experiences, help each other out with challenges. You know, and we do this in different, I call it, it's a four-pillar approach, which is like, First is the community. Uh, the second one is the peer-to-peer -peer group sharing. The third is kind of an individual service, meaning that we connect uh, founders to mentors so they can help uh, grow their businesses, fix, I don't know, uh, organizations and so on. And the fourth are, fourth are programs or boot camps and workshops. You know? So it's kind of like a four-pillar program that uh, goes across all the phases that uh, entrepreneurs and founders, you know, while they're growing, they're in. Yeah. And, you know, just reading your bio, you have obviously been involved in kind of the entrepreneurial journey in Slovenia uh, for quite some time, you know, and, and can you talk about like um, what it looks like being an entrepreneur in Slovenia? You know, what, what are some of the support systems? What are what are companies looking for? And, and how, how does that ecosystem work over there? So uh, we have a really great, uh, I would say, startup ecosystem. You know, there's mm -hmm. a lot of support for startups uh, that I see, uh, you know, um, a little bit less support with the capital uh, because we don't have a we don't have a VC fund that's like focused on the Slovenian startups, you know, but there are regional ones for doing invest. So it's kind of like, it helps out. Uh, I see, you know, that I, if, if I look back, you know, in the last eight, 10 years, there was a lot of focus on the startups, but now more focus goes into scale-ups, right? Because they're the ones who need additional support, you know, how to manage growth, you know, how to scale. And this is like the biggest, I see, uh, challenge and the breakthrough and founder needs to do, you know, uh, go through. Uh, while growing the company, you know, right. That's how it is usually. So. Yeah, yeah, that's interesting. I I also like how um, when we met in Chicago, and then you also mentioned it as well that uh, being brutally honest <laughs> with yeah. with entrepreneurs. Um, I think there is a certain a uh, mystique or um, kind of uh, nostalgia around. Ooh, you know, it's gonna, you're going to be an entrepreneur, and it's really exciting, and and you know, and and it's actually a lot of hard work um, and it's a lot of um, kind of growth, uh, you know, and, and, and challenges in that and, and figuring out what, what works for you. Um, you know, with the programs that you have developed with Seed, 
what what have you seen that has really worked especially uh just entrepreneurs who are at the really beginning stages of their business so at the beginning stages yeah you know they i see they just need to focus you know on building as usual their business model you know mm-hmm. figuring out you know what it takes you know what's gonna how they're gonna get to the product market fit you know and less uh, and i see them you know uh spending less and less time on i don't know like, you know there's some you know you have to attend a few conferences you have to go for some learning programs you know so so you get some insight you know from people who are from the industry or beyond that you know to give you the perspectives uh that you need but i feel like uh but i don't know 100 percent of time you know you still need to be working you know within your industry and just like hustling and working mm-hmm. it out you know and trying things and figure out who's your customer and you know discovery and validation and all those phases you know that have to go through yeah um and then for you know f- to become a member of seed yeah. um you know what what does membership look like once you join seed so we all, so we usually don't work with like uh tech startups mm-hmm. uh, at the beginning uh yeah. Just when they're in early stages, okay, you know, because we have so much uh, startup support in our ecosystem in Slovenia, you know, that we said, look, let's let's um, we're gonna focus on later stages, you know. Yeah. So a- as I mentioned, you know, every member, you know, who joins it, every founder who joins it, gets a four pillar approach, you know. Mm-hmm. So we kind of work with them holistically because I believe you need your peers who you can, you know, uh, talk about ideas, you know, but you can talk about your challenges. You know, and I'm sure someone someone out of the group, you know, has already figured it out, you know. Uh, then the second, there are some specific challenges mm-hmm. that you need a mentor, you know, to go, right. you know, to dive really deep. Then learning comes through some programs and then the whole community of support, you know, because what I've seen, um, you know, you really need the community to grow, you know. Yeah. And it, you, it's hard to do it on your own, you know. And being part of the community where where really we are brutally honest but we really help each other out you know mm-hmm. so i see you know i always say you look, look we're not the leaders of seed the community you know we're just the crew the founders are the community you know we just mm-hmm. like help them out you know f- to find each other you know so they can really bring out the best you know and go forward you know scale and so yeah i mean in, in facilitating community and, yeah. and and um you know that that's hard work and especially yeah. <laughs> um yeah you know when the pandemic hit how do we engage virtually you know what what what, all the program directors all the people you know we everything had to shift can you talk a little bit about you know what what your shift has looked like um and and you know like what has worked you know um and 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 maybe what hasn't worked Mm -hmm. so you know I'll, I'll never forget that weekend, you know, on the March 13th, uh, we, we were like, okay, what are we going to do on Monday? Because we had like a scheduled U.S. speaker mm-hmm. coming into the Slovenia. Of course, you know, he rerouted back to the U.S. Um, we were like, okay, what do we do? And we figured out, look, there's a couple of Facebook groups that work really well uh, in Slovenia. I said, let's just create a Facebook group. And we, we did it in, a, in like three days. We invited all our founders, you know, all our, all our members, you know, please join here. And we had the first event on Friday and the topic was, what are we going to do with sales? You know, and mm-hmm. we kept on having 10 weeks. We called it sales Friday. You know, every time different, different founders, speakers, mentors coming in, you know, and sharing what are they doing with sales? You know, can I sell? No, no. What? You know, can, should I wait? You know, because everyone was blank, you know, didn't know what to do. Then we kept on bringing, I saw, you know, specific, like really addressing the challenges, you know, founders have. Like, of course, we talked about the remote remote leadership, you know. Mm -hmm. We talked about how does the communication, you know, changes, you know, you know, because we were never used to working on virtual, you know, over Zoom. And I I felt like sales was like the number one. Uh, Then, of course, the leadership topics you know and challenges around that was number two then of course every uh, then we had like I, i'll never forget yeah we had like uh, we called it an sos button so if you have a specific challenge and you don't have an answer to 
just send on SOS dot seat uh, email, you know, and we're going to find a solution, you know. So it's kind of like, <laughs> we were like really like creative, fast, you know, and trying to yeah. really help them out. And that community worked for like three months, you know. Wow. Um, our, our first wave like ended uh, in the middle of May. Mm -hmm. So then, you know, of course, you know, people were back outside, you know, and mm -hmm. then we then what didn't work, you know, you asked the second thing that didn't work. We, we really saw you look, Facebook is cool, you know, but there's so many limitations, you know, let's create our own online community. You know? We started that whenever finished. So yeah. we still keep on doing it because it's hard, you know, having your own platform with we weren't developing it uh, on our own, you know, we used uh, platforms that are out there, you know, but still it is hard, you know, because the second approach that we then figured out during the summer, that summer, that was the summer of 22, 2020 actually, mm -hmm. was like, okay, we see where founders are um, engaged the most, you know, it's like, if, we, if you bring a small group of founders, like five, 10, five to 10, and you, you know, where they talk interactively, like really talk about around specific challenge, you know, that works, you know, and then we started having this kind of peer to peer conversations. I mean, I was like facilitating for also free, you know, free per week, you know, so that kind of helped us, you know, really have an engaging community, you know, and where they really get the value, you know, because our mission is always, you know, entrepreneurs, you know, need to be figuring out their challenges, you know, and how we can help them out, you know, is bringing people who are like two, ten, two steps ahead of them, you know, so they can bring in the experience, help them figure it out, you know, and move on. You know? so, yeah. Yeah. The, you bring up some, right. Yeah. You bring up some great points. You know, I also, um, you know, we started a Facebook group um, and a LinkedIn group and, you know, the engagement is not high. Um, I feel like those groups work really well if, you are offering uh, like jobs or contracts mm -hmm. or, you know, it's like people are finding work through it. Um, uh, like I know there's one that's called what up pitches that uh, is focused in like sync licensing. So basically mm -hmm. they help you, you know, craft your tunes to be able to put it in a commercial or a movie, et cetera, et cetera. Um, and then I also looked at uh, kind of customizing cause I was like, you know, I, I want to get this community off of social media. Mm -hmm and create an own, our own kind of online, you know, platform or community. Um, and yeah, there was a couple of issues with that, which was one, you know, the, our capacity to manage that is a, is a full-time position. Um, and in general people, I don't think want to have another platform that they have to engage on when they're probably on, you know, from a business standpoint on Slack or on LinkedIn, um, they're probably on Facebook. Um, you know, so, you know, trying to figure out and what you said, I, I totally agree. It's like actually a Zoom call with five, maybe 10 at the most people is, you know, is more effective. You know, the smaller groups face to face virtually um, you, you can you can you can recreate that that community feel. Um, whereas if the group, the Zoom call is like 30 people, it's not it doesn't work. No, it doesn't work. Yeah. <laughs> and and what we figured out, you know, we stopped having like uh, before COVID. You know, mm -hmm. we were like, uh, what we did, what we brought a foreign speaker, you know, mainly U.S. speakers, right. you know, uh, to Slovenia once monthly. You know, they were like product management expert, you know, marketing, growth hacking, leadership, mm -hmm. you know, name it, you know. And we did that once per month, and then uh, we really created, you know. A lot of added value for for our community you know from startups to global tech mm -hmm. and then you know should i bring them online no nobody's gonna come to listen you know because you have so much content on the web right you know that you're not gonna come at six to listen to that you know but you will listen to that you know to someone speak you know and share experiences at your own time so what we started also was the podcast that we wanted to have you know we wanted to start that even before COVID, but then mm -hmm. we said, look, no more leader talks, you know, that's how we called this kind of events. We said, okay, let's just move to the podcast. So then we published a uh, podcast once per week, you know, and that's how we created, you know, additional value to founders, you know, in the know-how, you know, so yeah. you just figure it out, you know, yeah. <laughs> on the way. It, it, I, 
And you know what I loved? I mean, yeah. for me, it was like, wow, nobody knows, you know, what works, you know? Yeah. And, and, and that blank landscape, you know, let's just figure it out, you know, let's try and see. And then we tried, you know, we tried a few things, some, something stayed, some things failed, you know, and right. you just can't. And, and I kind of love that, you know, because before COVID, you know, people still, you know, have expectations, you know, know what they get, you know, you have to provide the value in that format or what you, you know, what, uh, what you offered, you know, and then everything was like blurred, nobody knew, you know, and you just tried to figure out what works, you know, and it worked, you know, I, you know, we were really, um, you know, we gained new members, you know, even during COVID, which was like, wow, is that possible, you know, and, and it, and it is, you know, and now we're back to in-person events and they all love it, you know, we just had like three, uh, three community events. Uh, and so in this spring, you know, we started in March, then had an April one and a May one. And it's like, oh, and everybody loves coming back together, you know, and the feeling of community, you know, and so yeah. I, don't know gonna, what, I don't, I don't know what the future will bring. You know. I, don't know. I, I don't either. Uh, yeah. you know, and for us, you know, the, having the, in-person events has been impactful. It is definitely harder to get people to come than it was pre-COVID. Mm -hmm. uh, I believe people value their time even more now. So we are seeing a trend of post-work events, you know, after working hours, you really have to build um, something that is impactful that is all encompassing that has great speakers food network you know drinks like you have to pull all the stops yeah. um and we've had some successful events which has been great yeah. and i would say for us the the thing that the covid you know kind of opened up was just uh connecting with our, our international partners mm -hmm. Um, including you and, and and just some other other people were able to jump on zoom calls were able to do these talks you know it's great to meet in person but it's also just it's great to check in with our community on a global scale of hey what's working for you or you know how are things going in Slovenia and 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 you know what are the programs like and, and so you know that 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 yeah, has we, did been, the, we did the same you know yeah uh, that access because, has been great yeah because it was but we figured, okay, but nobody's going to listen to them for long. So what we created was like an hour of a panel, you yeah. know, like free speakers, you know, just like introducing themselves, you know, their challenges and then splitting back to, you know, breakout rooms, you know, like so again, again, break, uh, small groups sharing, you know, going deep, you know, and that also worked out. I know, you know, I also had some wonderful speakers dur uh, during COVID, you know, even uh, virtually, you know, and, and I know that works as well, you know. So. Yeah. But everyone, you know, now that, you know, everything's open, you know, and they want to come, you know, we would love, you know, we love hosting people. So, yeah, excited. we do too. Yeah. I mean, we, you know, we love hosting you, uh, yeah. your team and, yeah. and just in general, the, the face to face mm -hmm. uh, connection is, is, uh, not replaceable by screens. Um, so, yeah. well, well, I thank you so much for taking the time. I, I just, you know, in terms of, I, I'd love to leave uh, the listeners just with a little bit of kind of your uh, advice to, you know, mid-level entrepreneurs, which you're focused in, um, who are looking to scale up. What are some of the things that you, um, you know, have, have kind of advised people to do? And I've definitely, we've definitely already heard, build your community, find your mentors, find your peers you know, ask for help. These are really important things as you're growing your business. But is there anything else that, you know, you wanted to add on that? Um, I would say that, uh, like, really figure out, you know, what's one thing that's like uh, limiting you, you know, that's preventing you from growth, you know. Because when you move that, you know, limiting factors, you know, and they're usually like, uh, usually there might be personal, you know, or maybe people related, not necessarily market, right? You know, and if you can figure out first the personal, it's called, uh, you know, there's a term called founder's trap, you know, because you've been building the company from the beginning, you know, and you know everything, you know, all the processes, you know, all the functions, you know, everything, you know, and then going from, you know, uh, letting go 
you know, building a management team around that, you know, that's going to help you grow further, you know, uh, as, they, as they always say, you know, you need to hire the smartest people, you know, and building that kind of management team who's going to help you scale the company. I feel like that's a really, really important thing, you know. Yeah, that's or, a massive that's, transition. Yeah, that's, and then you can scale up. Uh, before that, you know, uh, it is quite hard because the company grows, the, the team grows. You can manage up to 15, but that's, but that's hard, you know. Right. If you're a 15, 20, 30, you know, you cannot manage any, everything on yourself, you know, by yourself. So you need a cool, competent, you know, mm-hmm. really competent team, you know, who's going to help you do that. And that would be my biggest advice. And really deep, look deep inside, you know, what do you want? And then you can go, you know, because I, what I see, um, this is a phase, you know, that's like really critical in the growth. Because in Slovenia, we have a lot of companies who grow, you know, up to the number of 20, 30, and that they don't, they don't break through that, right? Because you have to figure out and it's a really, uh, it's a really critical point. Um, but this is where we can really help them, you know, open, you know, openly talk, be brutally honest, you know, show them, you know, what are the ways how to do it, uh, you know, figure out uh, because at, the, at that point, you know, founders can then go back to the I don't know, why they started the company? Is it the, the development? Is it sales? Right. I don't know, marketing, right? right? And really, you know, bring out the best out of them, but still have the company scaling, you know. So, that's- well, I'm going to put the website below if you want to check out what yeah. I is doing in uh, Seed in Slovenia. Mm-hmm. She's a partner of uh, 2112 in the Center for Creative Entrepreneurship. You know, it's wonderful to be connected with a, a fellow colleague who is you know, working in the ecosystem and and looking at how to help entrepreneurs and business owners scale and grow their, grow their, grow their business. So I thank you so much for taking the time to talk to us today. Um, It's great to see you. And it was great to meet you uh, a month ago. It seems like that was like a hundred years ago, but. uh, (laughs) Thanks really for the invitation, you know, I I immediately invited and said, yeah, of course, you know, (laughs) for everything, you know, and it just feels like, uh, you know, brings Chicago closer. Yeah, you know, because I always say Chicago is like my third home, you know. So yeah. Anyway, well, so yeah, thanks again. Yeah, hopefully sometime I can uh, come visit you in Slovenia. So thank, thank you so much again for joining us. Thank you. There you have it, everyone. It's Aya Gosik from Seed uh, Slovenia. She's a program director. She's building resources, communities, programs for the entrepreneurial community in Slovenia. It was great talking with her today, you know, about what works, what doesn't, you know, I'm doing the similar work for the Center for Creative Entrepreneurship and in, in figuring out what what what's going to help the entrepreneur, what's going to help the business grow. Um, and, you know, we sometimes, you know, hit on something that works really well. And sometimes we figure out, well, that doesn't really work. Um, but it's it's great to to be connected on a global level, you know, with um, you know the people that are building those uh, support systems for entrepreneurs. Um, again, my name is Daniel Crane. I'm the director of programming at the Center for Creative Entrepreneurship, and this was another episode of Global Industry Spotlight, a conversational series focused on providing resources and insight for the creative entrepreneur. We are streaming out of the Comcast Business Startup Studio located at 2112 Chicago's first music, film, and tech incubator. Thank you to Comcast Business and Shure for providing the tools necessary to make our programming possible. Visit ccglobal.org to register for free workshops, check out the events that we have coming up, and connect with us and let us know what you want to learn or what what are some of the problems uh, that you're having. I love that I had talked about the SOS button. Um, that's, you know, what, what a great tool uh, just to focus on you know, hey, this is this is the problem that I'm having. So again, wishing everyone a, a wonderful rest of the week, um, and we will talk to you soon. Take care.